Okay, so today we're going to be working with data to do regression, multivariate regression, and we're going to be using a data set uh, located here in the Biostat department at the U of M um, that has data on the different voting numbers uh, of the 2000 election in Florida. Basically, a tally of all the votes that were taken across the 65 counties that are there. And uh, you can just go to this website and download it. And uh, we've already have this up in our Stata. And if we just look and browse in the data, the data itself, the first column is the name of the county, um, which there are, sorry, not 65. Uh, and then we have here a dummy variable for identifying Palm Beach County. As you can probably remember from the 2000 election, there's a lot of problematic uh, things with Palm Beach. So we're going to exclude it from our analysis. Uh, so we have identified Palm Beach as one uh, in this dummy variable so that we can drop it in a second. And the next column is the population for the number of people living in that county. Uh, and then we have a column for percent black, a column for percent white, percentage for Hispanic residents. Uh, and then we have this percent 65 just, just tells us uh, the percent of individuals who are over 65 years old because there's usually a lot of seniors in Florida so that's a good variable to take into account and then we have uh, percent co dash e which just is percent of college graduates so you know as you can tell there's a variation in how many people in that county are college graduates so this uh, Alakua County if I pronounce that correctly is 34.6 percent uh, next then we have a set of columns for the number of votes counted for each candidate so we have Gore Bush Buchanan Nader and then we have the total vote of that county. So today we're going to do a regression analysis where the dependent variable is going to be the voting rate of each county. And um, because each county has a different population, uh, we're going to take basically the total vote uh, divided by the total population to kind of get that voting rate. And we're also going to look at you know how many vote what's the voting rate for each candidate so taking the vote for Gore for instance in this county and dividing it by the total vote so if we look at our notes for today the first things we are doing is actually getting our dependent variables ready so we're going to be generating new variables for the voting rate and we're also going to be generating a variable for percent of that voting rate for a particular candidate and while we're dealing with this kind of early uh, manipulation of the data, we're also going to take the natural log for income. And then the last thing we're going to do in terms of preparing the data is we're going to drop that problematic Palm Beach County. I have my do file up, and you can see this do file on the website uh, with these videos and if you want to follow along. But the first set of things that I have going on is I'm just going to be labeling these variables uh, after I've loaded it up. So the label variable county you know I put the uh, quotation marks name of counties because it's more than one word so I highlight it and I go ahead and just click on do and uh, behind me I can see that the state echoed back the commands and I see that the labels have been applied here in the my variable view uh, next uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with getting rid of that problematic um, uh, Palm Beach case and that I'm just using the drop command drop if Palm Beach, which is that dummy variable, equals 1. And since all the other counties are equal 0, it's only going to drop that Palm Beach uh, observation. If you want to check to see what happened, uh, you might want to go check on the click on the data browser. And uh, you can see that the number of counties has actually dropped. Um, number 50 used to be Palm Beach County and now it's Pasco and instead of 67 observations of counties we have 66 so it looks like it dropped the right county close that and uh, the next thing I'm doing is creating my dependent variables and uh, like I said the the data set already gives me the total votes of each county but each county has different numbers of people living in that uh, county so we want to look at a voting rate this isn't the perfect measure for getting at this question of you know how many people voted in a county because we don't have the number of eligible voters uh, so if this was a more rigorous analysis you would, would want to know the total votes over eligible voters so we're just going to be roughly estimating by just looking at the population of each uh, county and so G here is the command which is really generate uh, generate a new variable called VR so VR for me is going to be the uh, voting rate equals and here I identify that function of the variable total votes of each county divided by the population. 
After creating this variable, I'm going to go ahead and label it. So label variable VR, rate of voting. And then I'm going to go through each candidate and generate a new variable for a voting rate. So generate a new variable called gore p equals take the variable gore and divide it by total votes of each county. Uh, label that as the new gore variable for vote percentage of gore. Let's do the same thing for bush. Take uh, Create a new variable called bush p equals the variable bush divided by total vo votes. And label that. And I do the same thing for Buchanan and Nader. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of that and uh, click on do. And I can see already on the left side of the variable view I've created these new um, voting rates and uh, rates of voting, vote percent of core, vote percent of Bush and so forth. So everything is looking good. If I wanted to look at the browser I could do that and you would see the new variables. Um, but we'll just move on assuming everything is going alright. Um, I'm going to do a histogram of income because I told you um, uh, it wasn't equally distributed and we can just see that if we just highlight it, if we uh, actually run a histogram command. And um, it's created this uh, separate document and you can see here that it's not a perfect uh, symmetrical distribution. So we're going to take the natural log just to kind of make this distribution look a little bit better. The problem with not having uh, a normal distribution is that it kind of violates the assumption uh, under which standard error is calculated because standard error is basically the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of people in the sample. And if the standard deviation of the sample is a little bit off, then the calculations of standard error are going to be somewhat off as well. Uh, so I'm going to close that and take a natural log of that variable and here I'm just saying generate a new variable called natural log income equals and here I can just do ln the computer knows what to do with that natural log of this variable so take all the values of income and take the natural log of it and put it in this new variable called natural log income so highlight it um, then I go ahead and label it I see my new variables created and then I'm going to go ahead and run a histogram. And uh, the distribution looks a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it looks a lot better. Um, we have two tails. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, after we've done all the kind of manipulation, we're just going to take a look at the data in terms of doing a scatter plot and just to make sure that there is kind of a linear relationship between all of the dependent variables and the independent variable. So basically look at the voting rate and look at those different factors that we're thinking about looking at. So basically how does the percentage of educated individuals and the number of Hispanics or income levels or you know and percentage of people over 65, how do those variables relate to uh, the voting rate? And in the sc scatter plot we're just basically going to see if there is some kind of linear relationship that we can kind of uh, maximize with a simple regression. So um, let's go ahead and look at my do file. That's what we do next is the scatter plot. And to create a scatter plot, you just uh, type in scatter and uh, you identify the two variables that you're interested in. So here's our dependent variable, the voting rate um, by percent college. Highlight it. And uh, we can kind of see a linear relationship in terms of as the percentage of people who are college educated gets increased, you can kind of see a gradual increase in the voting rate. So here we have around 10% and around 25% participation in terms of voting. And over here we have close to 39% and around you know 47% voting. So there is a relationship. You know, there's some outliers here, but generally it's a linear relationship. And you can go ahead and put a line uh, of what that relationship looks like or approximates that relationship and that's what I have on my do file here and to put that uh, line um, the command is basically type out the scatter plot command again with two variables and then you have these two bars here and sometimes the one bar in state of command or state of syntax means or but when you have two bars for a graph it's actually going to tell Stata to put the two graphs together and so it's basically saying take the scatter plot graph that we just made and put it together with this linear fit uh, graph which is basically saying give a linear fit line of the voting rate 
over the percent of college and put those two graphs together so um, highlight that run it uh, state it puts those two commands together and one we have the scatter plot like we did last time but now we have that linear line now um, if you're watching this video maybe you want to try out the different dependent variables so that might be a good thing to do always is just to look at the different dependent variables you think you're going to be using in your regression model and plot it against the dependent variable so the voting rate is always the dependent variable or even maybe the voting rate for Gore, Bush, or Buchanan, or Nader uh, have that to be the dependent variable and then put on the different independent variables just to see if that linear relationship is true throughout and we've already done that so we know uh, for us that we are ready to go on and move on to the regression and doing a simple regression, typing out the command is actually pretty simple. Um, you type in reg or regression. You The first variable after the command, you actually put in the dependent variable, so again, voting rate. And then you put in the independent variables. And since we only have one independent variable, that's percent college. And uh, you run that. And basically, you know, we just saw that straight line uh, put out uh, against this percent college in the scatter plot. And basically, it's going to give us that line in mathematical form in a way for us to describe it in terms of a coefficient and um, we've also given you an example here of the regression for gore so you can run this example at home and try it your own way or try it with another dependent variable but the formula is always the same it's command uh, list the dependent variable and then you list the independent variable so I'm gonna highlight it and run it Stata gives out an output, and basically it's in three parts. The first part here is just a basic ANOVA table that's looking at the sums of squares. Uh, we won't discuss that, but basically they use the sums of squares and the mean sums of squares uh, to calculate the F statistic, which is basically a significance test for the entire model. Uh, and uh, you can look at the probability of you want this to be basically under 0.05 and it basically assesses how significant the model is in terms of the coefficients that are represented is the entire model is it uh, the null hypothesis is that all the coefficients are actually zero and you can reject that hypothesis um, at a 0 0.002 level so we know that um, the model at some aspects of the model is statistically significant the next statistic here on this second part it gives us an R squared which is basically the amount of variance explained by the model so around 13 percent of the variance is explained which is not too bad adjusted R squared doesn't really mean anything in this context it's just to uh, an adjustment if we had more than one coefficient one, more than one independent variable and since we only have one independent variable we're going to be looking at the R squared uh, and then let's go ahead and look at the actual coefficients and here in the table of coefficients we have VR which is just telling us is the dependent variable so that's you know separated from the independent variable and then the constant of the formula so and then it actually gives us what the coefficients are for these two aspects of the model quick look at this you should just look at the p-level of a particular coefficient so we know that the percent of people who are college educated Ha is statistically significant so as is the c constant and basically uh, what this is saying is that uh, per percentage of college educated uh, in the county increases the percent rate of voting by a third of a percent so if we have 10% um, of people who are college educated in a county that means roughly around a 3.8% change in the voting rate